accept the challenge of the 1957 world champion Milwaukee Braves, Warren Spahn, Henry Aaron, and Eddie Matthews. And now, here's the host of Sports Challenge, Dick Ember. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And welcome fans from coast to coast and around the world to Sports Challenge. Oh, what a lineup. We have three Hall of Famers from the Celtics, Cousy and Auerbach and Charmin. And watch out, Braves. It uh, looks like the redhead already has the cigar <laughs> lighted. And for the Braves, look, just look at that picture. Now, you got Warren Spahn, no man in Major League Baseball history ever won more games as a left-hander than Spahn, over, well over 300. And between Henry Aaron and Eddie Matthews, you've got almost 1,300 Major League home runs. Good luck to both teams. The Celtics play the Braves on Sports Challenge. And we'll begin our first category, men and one of the many record breakers established by the immortal Henry Aaron. Right after this Sports Challenge timeout. They are the champions of the National Basketball Association, the Boston Celtics, many, many times champs against the 1957 world champs of baseball, the Milwaukee Braves. Here we go, men. Your toss-up question. First category is record breakers. Another milestone in Henry Aaron's magnificent career. Here's Chuck Benedict. May 17, 1970, Atlanta at Cincinnati. Henry Aaron at bat against the Reds' Wayne Simpson. Aaron looking for the big one. Infield pulled around to the left, ground ball past the mound. Woodward over, he'll have to hustle. Aaron beats it out, and that's the big one. Base hit number 3,000 for Henry Aaron, and Stan Musial congratulates him. That's a pretty good picture. Aaron Musial, they finished one and two all time in National League hits, career hits. Only 13 men, only 13 in the history of baseball, are in that exclusive 3,000-hit club. Obviously, many greats didn't make it to 3,000. Your question for 20 points, toss-up. One of the following four did not collect 3,000 Major League hits. Name him. I'm going to give them to you alphabetically. Al Kaline, Willie Mays, Babe Ruth, Honus Wagner. Bill Sharman. I say Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth did not have 3,000 hits. That's right. 20 points for the Celtics. Celtics get the free throws. Final moments of the record-breaking coaching career of UCLA's John Wooden. San Diego Arena, 1975 NCAA championship. Here's Kurt Gowdy. Say something to the young people of America. John Wooden did become a national winner until he was 53 years old. He didn't win in his first 16 years at UCLA, a national title. He won in his late 50s and 60s. UCLA has won the national title. They're ahead, 92 85. Up on the rebound, Marcus Johnson getting across. Three, two, one. Ball over. UCLA. What an incredible finish. Wooden, of course, had announced his retirement before that final game and won his 10th and final NCAA championship in that contest in San Diego. His Bruins won the most national collegiate titles ever, 10. For 10 points, Celtics, what team is second with five NCAA championships? Kentucky. Kentucky, says Red Auerbach, is correct. The Wildcats who won their fifth in 1978. 30 points for the Celtics, and here's your final free throw. August 1961, and a 40-year-old Southpaw makes his way into baseball's history books. Warren Spahn has given these Milwaukee fans so many great thrills and in great numbers. A sellout crowd at County Stadium tonight to cheer Spahn on as he goes for his 300th Major League victory against the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs with a run in the sixth inning have tied it at one. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Gino Simoli up for the Braves. He swings at a Jack Curtis fastball, and it's gone into the left field bleachers. Milwaukee leads two to one. Spawn now has only three outs to go to get his 300th win. Two away. Up is Jim McEnany. Fly ball to right field. Henry Aaron is there. He's got it. And Warren Spawn has become the first National League pitcher since Grover Cleveland Alexander in 1924 to win 300 Major League games. I love that conservative Warren Spahn as he went off the field blowing kisses to the crowd and doffing his cap. Spahn's 300th win, a milestone on his way to the Hall of Fame. Celtics, only three 
National League Southpaws have ever been inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame. Carl Hubble is one, Spani is one, and a Dodger pitcher of the 60s is the third. Ten points, name that third Southpaw. Koufax. Sandy Koufax is correct, and the Celtics, after the first round, have 40, and the Milwaukee Braves looking for their first point. Here's your new category, men. Category two, the unexpected, and an amazing moment in NFL history. The Vikings and the Bills, December 1975. Leading Buffalo here in the second half. Snow here in Buffalo. And Fran Tarkin that already has one touchdown pass today. He's going for the record. He's rolling right. Looks for Foreman. Flips in the flat. Complete the Foreman at the four. Hit at the four. Breaks the tackle. Slips. Braces himself. He's in the end zone. That'll do it. The 291st touchdown pass by Fran Tarkenton. That is an all-time record. He breaks Johnny Unitas' mark. Foreman has tied the single-season mark. That was his 22nd touchdown. A historic play. Fran Tarkenton to Foreman. This will be interesting. We have basketball and baseball players. We'll see what they know about football. It was unexpected that the little scrambler from Georgia would throw more touchdown passes than any quarterback in NFL history. But for your 20-point toss-up, what Colt quarterback holds the record for completing 17 consecutive forward passes? 17 in a row, a Baltimore Colt quarterback. Can you name him? We'll give you a clue. His father... Dub starred in the 50s with the Cleveland Browns. And this cold quarterback set the record in 1974. Yes, Morrow? Earl Morrow? Earl Morrow is incorrect. So we'll repeat the clues for the Milwaukee Braves. It's worth 20 points in the toss-up. He completed 17 straight passes. His father played for the Browns. His name was Dub. He did this record, set this record in 1974. Time's up. Burt Jones. Burt Jones of the Colts. All right, we play the two free throws as if they're toss-ups. You're both alive on both these free throws. When Ty Cobb retired, it was unexpected that his base-stealing record would be broken. It's August 1977. Cards, Padres. Here's Al Wisk. In the first inning, he tied Cobb's record. Now in the seventh, he's trying to break it. This could be it. There goes Brock. The pitch by Jones. The throw by Roberts. He hits away, and he's done it. He has done it. Lou Brock has stolen base 893. That is a new Major League career record. He has broken the record set by Ty Cobb, a record they said would never be broken. Yeah, he's the same. But the moment is here. And I, all I can say, looking back on it, uh, Randy, I did it my way. I did it my way. Lou Brock. Now, that was a record people said would never be broken. Another Cardinal outfielder, now you're both alive, in 46 was credited with stealing the World Series against the Red Sox. He went from first to home. Eddie Matthews. Uh, slaughter. Went first to home on a single. Ten points named that Cardinal outfielder, Enos Country Slaughter. That's ten points for the Braves. It's 40 to 10. Your final free throw and you're both alive again. An unexpected moment. Game three, 70 NBA playoffs. The Knicks lead the Lakers, seconds to play. Here's Chick Hearn with an incredible moment. Pass! Three seconds. Inbound pass to West. West from the backcourt, an 80-foot jumper. Good! <laughs> that reminds me of the shot we showed Charmin making uh, last week on Sports Challenge. Only Bill was trying to throw a pass to Cousy, and, <laughs> and West really was trying to make that one. He was a pretty good percentage shooter, was he not, Red? Well, he was one of the best. All right, so here we got two great guards here and West in the same era. All right, this is your second free throw, both the Braves and the Celtics alive. Despite his many great years, West was never an NBA most valuable player. Another all-time great did not win an MVP award in his career. We want you to name which of the following did not win the most valuable player in the National Basketball Association. Was it Will Chamberlain, Willis Reed, Elgin Baylor, or Bill Russell? Willis Reed. Willis Reed is an incorrect answer. Willis Reed did it one at one time with the Knicks. So Braves, it's worth 10 points to you. Was it then Will Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, or Bill Russell who did not win the MVP? Your guess, please. Elgin Baylor. Elgin Baylor is correct for 10 <laughs> points. So after two rounds, the score, the Boston Celtics 40 and the Milwaukee Braves 20. And we'll be back with our third category.
famous finishes and a look at an NCAA basketball finish that is almost unbelievable right after this Sports Challenge timeout. At the halfway mark, the Boston Celtics have 40 and the Milwaukee Braves 20. Good game going and gentlemen, this is your third category, famous finishes. It's the semifinals of the 1977 NCAA championship. Marquette against North Carolina Charlotte. Here's Al Wisk. Ten seconds left. NCAA semifinals. The Omni in Atlanta. Marquette on top by two points, but Charlotte inbounds the ball. Here's Cornbread Maxwell. He's trying to work his way down the lane. Maxwell inside the lane. A hanging looper is up and good, and the game is tied. They have tied the game. The surprise team, Charlotte, has tied it at 49 with just three seconds left as Marquette calls timeout rapidly. Now the Charlotte cheerleaders think they're going into overtime, but there's three seconds left. Can Marquette get the ball down court? Here's the long pass from Lee. It goes down to Whitehead. He fights him off one second, and the ball is in the hoop. But was it before or after the buzzer? Paul Galvin, the official, over the bench. He's conferring with a timer. He says yes. And Marquette has won 51 to 49. Al McGuire hugging Butch Lee, and it's on to the finals for the Marquette Warriors. And of course, Al McGuire, my colleague on the collegiate basketball telecast, went on to beat North Carolina in his final game for the NCAA championship. Al McGuire's brother, Dick, was also a coach in the NBA from 1966 to 68. Your 20 point toss up. What NBA team did Dick McGuire coach? Red Arbuck. The Knicks. The New York Knicks is correct for 20 points. A little hesitation there, Arnold. Free throws belong to the Celtics. Here's the Montreal Canadiens in a famous Stanley Cup finish against the Boston Bruins. It's overtime. 1977 Stanley Cup Finals. It's the fourth game. They're in overtime. Game tied 1-1. Here comes Steve. Shot down the near wing. Shut. Over to the floor. The floor saved by Cheevers. The puck comes loose in the corner. The Canadiens trying to dig it out. The Bruins trying to hold it against the boards. The floor working. And the, he has it loose behind the net. He centers it. The scores. And the Montreal Canadiens win. The Canadiens have won the Stanley Cup. 432 another time. As the acting captain, Serge Savard, holds the Stanley Cup aloft, the Canadians have won the Cup for the 20th time in the 31-year history of the Stanley Cup championship. That was the 20th Stanley Cup for the Canadians, making them the Yankees of hockey. Your free throw, Celtics. What former Montreal great became the first man to score 50 goals in one season? He was known as the Babe Ruth of hockey. Five seconds. Richard. Maurice Richard. Maurice the Rocket Richard is correct. I know that the Celtics enjoy their hockey and, of course, the Boston Bruins and their home base sharing the same arena that I'm sure you became acquainted many times with the, the great skaters with the Bruins. All right, your second free throw. Here's a famous finish. Milwaukee won't ever forget. Low for that, and the Milwaukee Braves lead the Yankees 5 0. Bottom of the ninth, one out. Gil McDougal, line drive, center field, base hit. The Yankees, known for their late-inning rallies, have a man on. Jerry Coleman with two away, slices one to right field. That's in for a base hit. Two on for the Yankees, two out, bottom of the ninth. Seventh deciding game of this 1957 World Series. Tommy Byrne hits for himself. Ground ball heading for center field. Felix Mantia knocks it down and, and is picked up by the shortstop Johnny Logan. The bases are full. Two outs, and here comes Bill Scourin. Is this another edition of that 5 o'clock lightning of the Yankees? Can they come from behind? 5-0. Eddie Matthews guarding the line deep at third. Bases full. Burdett wines. Scour and swings, pulls one down the line, backhanded by Matthews. He goes to the bag for the force out, and the Milwaukee Braves are the 1957 World Champions of Baseball. Braves doing something few could in those days. Let's beat the Yankees. And of course, our three panelists all contributing and all going on to the Hall of Fame. It's just a matter of time for Mr. Aaron. All right, your free throw question belongs to the Celtics. Eddie Matthews is only the third is the only third baseman to ever hit 500 or more home runs. For 10 points, what brothers, also third baseman, played opposite each other in the 64 series, each hit a home run in the same game? You have five seconds. Uh, what? Boyers. The Boyers. Cleet and Ken. <clears throat> Cleet, of course, with the Yankees and Ken with the Cardinals. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the third round on the score now. The Celtics 80. And the Milwaukee Braves 20, but here's a big 30-point toss-up question. This is our classics edition, one famous film clip worth 30 points. A return to a World Series game that may never be forgotten. Here's Red Barber. The Yankees are ahead 2-1. to one. 
John Friedall, the pinch runners at second, the tying run. Mixes the winning runs at first base. Both out of the lawn with walks, both the pinch runners. No hits by Bevins. Eight and two thirds innings. Two out last of the night. The pitch to Labajato. Swung on and missed. The fastball. It was in there. Strike one. The pitch. Swung on. There's a drive hit out toward the right field corner. Henrik is going back. He can't get it. It's off the wall for a base hit. Here comes the tying run. And here comes the winning run. Friends, they're killing Labajato. His own teammates. They have beaten him to pieces. And it's taken a police escort to get Labajato away from the Dodgers. One of the great moments. And of course, a superb call by Red Barber. Heartbreak for Bill Bevan. Just one out away from a no-hitter in World Series play. He became the first pitcher, in fact, at that time to throw a one-hitter in a World Series. Only two other Series one hitters have ever been pitched since. Of course, we're just not including Don Larson's no-hitter perfect game. Claude Passo threw a one-hitter, and a Red Sox one-hitted the Cardinals in 1967. Your 30-point toss-up. Name that Boston pitcher who one-hitted St. Louis in 67. He is still pitching with the Phils as the clue. Eddie Matthews. I was going to say Gibson. Want to take a guess? Uh, Gibson. In incorrect answer. The Boston Red Sox pitcher. He's still pitching with the Phils currently. Oh, yes. Lonberg. Jim Lonborg is correct for 30 oh, points. So the score after four rounds. It's the Boston Celtics 110 and the Milwaukee Braves 20. And in a moment, our bonus biography round right after this sports challenge timeout. Our score on Sports Challenge, the Boston Celtics 110, the Milwaukee Braves 20, and now our 60-point bonus biography round. Gentlemen, good luck to both sides. Here are your clues. This superstar's great weapon is a hook that comes out of the blue. He can slam with either hand, and defensively, he's marvelous at rejecting opponent's shots. At high school in New York, he was Red Auerbach. Jabbar. That's the exact answer. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, our mystery guest. We're going to say, like Horace Greeley, he migrated to Westwood. <laughs> and now, great Laker and a great pro. Kareem, thank you for being with us. <laughs> you could have waited a little bit longer, at least to draw out the suspense a little bit. That's right. And they couldn't see the silhouette. There was no advantage to seeing the silhouette. Somehow I keep getting shorter. I can remember when I was doing the UCLA games when Kareem was there, and everyone thought that I was three feet eight inches tall. I could never convince anyone. I, and I used to lose circulation in my right arm because in holding the microphone up, you lose it all. You ever had thoughts about being a sportscaster yourself? That seems to be the trend. Uh, well, not really sportscasting. I've been interested in, in journalism all my life. Uh, not necessarily sportscasting, but uh, I, I would take a job if you have something for me. Right? <laughs> I just like to go along with you wherever you want to go. <laughs> Tough, toughest man ever to defense. Who is the toughest man you've ever had to play defense against? Wow, that's um, I've had to guard Bob McAdoo sometimes. That's very hard because he's uh, very mobile and he shoots it so well from out from very far outside. Um, uh, Jerry Lucas. Uh, for the same reason. Uh, he, he wasn't really a center, and uh, I had to go out there and uh, run around and try and find him out there. And that, was, that was difficult. <laughs> the men who could get away from their basket and go outside and hit the long jumper. Yeah. Kareem, great to have you on Sports Challenge. I know when you want to say hello to Ray. He's got the cigar really going now. He wants to say hello to you. Thank you for being with us. Kareem Jabbar, our mystery guest. Fans will talk to our stars, recap the scores right after this Sports Challenge timeout. So our Boston Celtics are the champions. They've defeated the Milwaukee Braves 158 to 20. And we hope you'll be with us again next week, fans, when the Boston Celtics will accept the baseball challenge of the 1955 Brooklyn Dodgers. Don Newcomb, Duke Snyder, and Carl Erskine. For Sports Challenge and Kareem Jabbar, Dick Enberg, thank you for being with us.